Um, so either way it go, we're all good. Okay. Excellent. You ready? I am ready. We'll speed ahead. All right, everyone, you know your host, Cy Smith, coming to you on a blue Wednesday. Every Wednesday is economic day. You guys know we talk about how do we do like Chinatown, Greek Town, Little Italy, and that's Black people spend money internally so that our culture can be progressive and move forward. Nothing wrong with that. If there's nothing wrong with Chinatown, Greek Town, Little Italy, there's nothing wrong with Black people doing the same thing. So on Wednesdays, we try to you guys entrepreneurs, black big people who are doing their thing so that you can support them. At the end of the month, can you name four black people you spend money with? So who I'm about to bring up now is a queen I met from her sister in Miami. And now you guys are gonna be able to meet uh, Sister Don here. So without further delay, how you feeling there, Don? I am feeling blessed. I'm here another day, you know, Another hustle, another struggle, another day for us to make it happen. Now, for, for those who don't know, like, who are you? Uh, what do you do? Um, so people can kind of really connect with you first. Like, who are you? and what, what do you do? Okay, so first of all, I'm from Cincinnati, Ohio. I was born in Cincinnati, Ohio. Um, I've traveled a lot. I am now located in New Orleans. Um, I have several businesses that I run. Um, they're still building, but they are here. Um, based out of New Orleans, I have a, a company called Queen of All Trades. Uh, mm -hmm. Queen of All Trades is basically a promotions and entertainment company. It was something that I came about because I just wanted to do events and I wanted to network with people mm -hmm. and I wanted to kind of showcase talent and things like that here in New Orleans and not only in New Orleans, but anywhere that I, that I went. Um, so I actually started Queen of All Trades, which is funny. I started Queen of All Trades and I didn't know anything about business. Uh, and so after I started the LLC, I went to college. <laughs> I went to college for business management and I got my associate's degree and I learned about the business in college. Um, so with Queen of All Trades, what I do is I just promote network, give artists, organizations, platforms here in New Orleans, of course, I'm a black woman. So my primary focus is the urban community. Um, give them a platform to promote and to network and put us all in one room so we can communicate with each other and, and, and liberate each other and encourage each other to, you know, support each other. Um, I also have now, a- now, now, That's what I was gonna say, you went right in. Like, <laughs> so, uh, because you got two more businesses, uh, but I wanted them to know, connect with you first though are you a mom uh oh, like what made you I, i'm a mother i have a 17 year old <laughs> i have a 17 year old and i have a 14 year old i am the second of seven siblings so i'm the oldest girl yes um i just i just have a passion for for helping and doing my part well, um, well, well that's what i was going to say with that many siblings you've taken on responsibility like early on in life, huh? Yes, absolutely. I feel like I've raised everybody under me. <laughs> <laughs> and so not necessarily could... raised, but you know, you're, you're just responsible for, for those that are under you. So you want to look out for, for them too, because we've had some adversities too. My mom passed away when I was 20. So some of us got separated um, and, and I ended up traveling and my sisters uh, resided in Cincinnati, Ohio. So there was some adversities too, but overall, I still feel like, you know, I'm one of, I am the oldest. <laughs> now, now, and, and, and what you just said, you know, with anything in business, people really, they buy you, they buy your brand. And so that's why it was important for them to hear that, because that's going to touch some, some people in a way that if you didn't say that, it wouldn't have impacted them. So that's important that you met adversity and you triumphed adversity. And it sounds like that might be what got you into uh, business. Business is about, you know, leadership, doing things, right. taking risks, you know? Right. So I, also, I also dropped out of school when I was 16 because I wanted to, you know, do my thing. But uh, when mm -hmm. I did drop out of school, I asked my mother, I asked her, I said, hey, I don't want to do this. I was an honor student and I, it wasn't really mm -hmm. anything going wrong with school. I just felt like I didn't belong for whatever reason. I didn't feel like I belonged in the system. So she told me that in order for me to leave, because she felt like I was responsible enough to do it, that I had to have a plan. Um, so she said, well, what's your plan? 
And my plan was I was going to go to Job Corps <laughs> in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. I went to Job Corps in 96. Uh, I got my GED and a, I'm a certified chef. And so I got all of that at the age of 16. So I got that out the way <laughs> just so I could make my mom, you know, proud and just to let her know, hey, look, I did what you told me to do. I got what I was supposed to right, get. So, right. you know, um, but I did feel like it was important afterwards, after uh, living and learning that I went back to get the proper education because I learned after a while that you know, maybe I should have stayed in school, but I didn't. And I have these experiences now. And maybe it was meant for me to have these experiences, but now it's time for me to go back and do it the right way. Mm -hmm. So that was the reason why I decided to go to college and get that degree too. Uh, that that that's a that's a great, great story. Now your son, what is what is he trending toward? Is he into arts? He's into business? Like what, what would you say he's um He's a football player. <laughs> he's a football player. He's a, my son is actually an honor student. He's been an honor student since the beginning of time. Um, I'm not sure what he wants to major in. I'm trying to convince him to major in business, of course, because um, entrepreneurship is important to me. I don't want him to have to work for any other companies. I've told him that the best thing to do is to make your own money and not wait for anybody else to pay you. Um, and he's learning that now because he sells shoes you know the kids like jordans and <laughs> all of these things so we've taught him how to buy and trade shoes and kind of make his own money so he's also learning his own business right now too awesome. um no nah, that, that's, that's good <laughs> but he plays football very charismatic such a character um and i, I think he's he's gonna be okay but he graduates this year due to COVID, you know, it's a, a weird year for a 12th grader. So we're not sure how graduation is going to go, but he's going to a JUCO uh, because they skipped him a grade. Yes, he was in the 10th grade last year. He was not aware he was in the 12th grade until he went to pick up his information um, because he has college credits basically already. Um, so what, they what gave him JUCO? Uh, a junior college. Oh, what JUCO? Did you ask me what JUCO? No, I was saying what what does JUCO mean? But you yeah, junior, junior college, okay. Junior college, yeah. Okay, okay. All right, cool. So babe. we're we're Excellent. looking forward to that for him. <laughs> All right. And no, then my, so you you tell me. Oh, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, my 14-year-old, he is uh, a basketball player and he likes video games. He's uh on the internet a lot. So I try to instead of moving him away from the internet and saying, hey, you don't need to be on here all day. I try to give him, put him in the mind frame of how are you going to make money doing this? Or how can you make money doing this? Is this is what you want to do? He right. loves video games. He sits on YouTube and watches all these video games. So right now we're in the process of teaching him how to make money doing what he loves since this is something that he loves to do. And I cannot stop him <laughs> from being online and being on YouTube. And I can to a certain extent, but it's something that he likes to do. So why not give him something creative to think about if this is what he wants to do? Now, now I thought you only had one son. So how many children you have? Two. I oh, have two. two. Okay. Four, all right. 14, all, right. 17. all right. So so now that people tapped in, you uh, live in New Orleans? Live in New Orleans. I actually don't live in New Orleans. I'm like 15 minutes away. I'm across the river on the West Bank, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm here in New Orleans. I work in New Orleans. I've worked at all of the arenas here in New Orleans as a bar supervisor. Um, so I'm very all around the city of New Orleans in that aspect. Now with, with the violence and everything, are you worried about your sons? Is that a part of your motivating factor? Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. And that is also part of the reason why I created my second organization to the nonprofit Peace in the Streets. Um, I had a friend of mine that was murdered in 2015 uh, on Berg in the French quarters. And I was so angry and upset because I've had so many other friends. When I was 14, a friend of mine was murdered in uh, Miami, Florida, Jermaine Jackson. I was in the seventh grade. He was murdered. A guy Crazy stuff happened, but he ended up being murdered. So that was my first encounter with violence. And at such a young age, it kind of scarred me a little bit. And then so growing up in Miami, I had a few more friends that were murdered due to violence too. And then here, once that happened with him, I was just so frustrated. I was angry. 
I was mad and I said, I need to take this energy and do something else with it and create something to where I can push out this negative energy and create more positive energy. So that's how Peace in the Streets was created. What's the third uh, structure you have? Divine Cocktails, which is uh, my, my profession, my craft. Um, I've been a bartender since I was 18 years old. So I've been in the business for about 22 years. And um, I saw a lot of the companies that I worked for, Superdome, Smoothie King Arena, um, the convention center, make millions and millions and millions of dollars. <laughs> and I said, you know what? Maybe I need to start my own business too, to get in where I fit in in this industry because I've helped these companies make this money and I've seen these companies make this money. So I decided to create my own bartending and beverage catering service too. So that's what I do here in New Orleans. We cater to parties and weddings and bar mitzvahs, football games, whatever, whatever you want, whatever you need. Um, and I'm a mixologist at this point. I'm more than just a bartender. I study mixology too. So like a DJ? Yeah, bartender DJ. <laughs> <laughs> Cocktail DJ, cocktail DJ. So, no, nah, and, and, and that's a real craft. Like you had to get some certification to do that, right? Absolutely, absolutely. I have a responsible vendors permit. I went to bartending school in Miami, ABC bartending school. Um, we have to get a re our certification renewed every four years. Um, we have surf safe certifications that we have to have and everything here. So I'm definitely, definitely certified. Um, I don't want to lose my responsible vendors permit because then I can't serve alcohol. So yes, I'm definitely certified. So, so how does that work? You like mix these drinks and you go door to door and sell them. You do vending. Like how does, how do you uh, go to market? I, cre I created my own cocktails and not, and not, not necessarily created my own, but I created the cocktails the way I wanted to create the cocktail so they become signature cocktails. And then I put them on the market. Sometimes I'll just look at alcohol and say, hey, I think this will go good with that. And then mix it together, boom, give it a name. And it's another cocktail. So I do a lot of signature stuff like that too. Um, and with Divine Cocktails, we create cocktails as well. So if there's a wedding and let's say the bride likes vodka, vodka and grape juice. So we think of things that go together with vodka and grape juice, we'll create a concoction and we'll make a signature cocktail. So that's what mixology is. It's kind of like seeing what goes together, kind of putting the formula together, going in the lab and mixing it up and creating that new cocktail. Now, now you 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 can put a bad concoction together too, right? You don't mix them. No, not divine right? cocktails. Like so like no, oh no, not me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> No, I mean, but it can be done. So you need to know what you're doing, right? Because it's some absolutely. things that don't mix. Absolutely. There are things that don't mix. And there are also things that you may not think mix well that do mix well. And that's where I come in too, because you'll hear people say, hey, well, I don't drink this or I don't drink that. But if you mix this and that with certain juices and certain other liqueurs, and you know, it kind of comes together, you'll like it. And sometimes I don't even tell people. If they're allergic to something, I'll tell them because you don't want anybody <laughs> that's allergic to anything, you know, falling out. But if they're not allergic to anything, I'll just give them a concoction and then ask them, what do you think's in there? And it'll be something maybe they don't even drink. And, right. it's, a, and it's a good cocktail. So that's what I pride myself in, putting stuff together that people wouldn't usually drink and yeah. making a concoction out of it. Yeah. Now is... um. Is it profitable or is it more passion? Who uh, both. Um, profitable, definitely. The liquor industry is booming. It doesn't matter. You, people are going to drink during death. People are going to drink when they're stressed out. People are going to drink when they're happy. People are going to drink regardless to what happens. Um, so it's always booming, but it is a passion also. Um, I think it's more of a skill than a passion passion for me but it is something that i love to do and it's something that comes easy to me and now, also i just want to put this out there too i do have non-alcoholic beverages and i'm also working on health beverages too i, I was about to bring that up because you was telling me you would mix ginger and, and turmeric yes. and all that, right? ginger turmeric and lemonade that's one of my concoctions um, I have a peppermint tea concoction that I'm working on right now. I want to get some teas mixed together. So 
yeah, there's a few things that I'm working on. Something with with Jack Daniels that I'm working on too. Now, but but that's all for local, huh? Do you ship? Can you ship? I can ship, but the thing about shipping is that I don't have a biz. Uh, I don't have a a building now due to COVID. Um, I was working on getting a building. And that was last year, but I didn't get a building. And because of finances and everything, it's kind of hard getting a building right now with everything so in the air. But you have to have a building to get a liquor license to mail. Now, I could do it. I mean, of course, I could do it, but I want to do it the legal way. I want to do it the right way. I don't want to jeopardize my business and my integrity of my business by doing things the wrong way. So uh, but, we're but working what's on about that the health year. one, not, not the liquor one, the, the health oh. ones. Um, yeah, health drinks will we'll, we'll ship. How does well, that look? How, how what do you mean? Ship? Like you, you go like you put it into a, a, a milk jug, mason jars. You make sure it's compact with the little bubble wrap. Put it in a box. Boom. You've done that before. Yes. And and it arrived <laughs> safely. Yes. Yes. As long as it's secure. As long as everything is secure, it's fine. If you have a glass, a mason jar, or something like that, all you have to do is put bubble wrap or something inside the box. And let that be the reason. You can also freeze it if it's a drink that needs to be frozen. You can freeze it. I'll probably have I have to send it maybe a day or two, of course, because it's not going to last a few days. But as long as it's frozen for a day or two, and then they have those little ice pack things, the little ice packs that they use now too, that you can put inside so that it stays cold inside of the packaging. So they have certain ways that you can you can send off things. Yeah, are you expensive? I am not expensive. Um, shipping, of course, shipping is more expensive because, you know, shipping is expensive. But as far as just the, the, the supply or as far as the alcohol, no, I'm not expensive. My prices range from $7 to maybe about $55 or $60, $65, depending on A, the type of alcohol that you use. I also sell gallons. <laughs> so we do gallons we do half gallons um i do mason jars i do um concentrated uh infused alcohol also so infused means like i'll get a vodka and i'll infuse it with grapes if you like grape vodka or i'll infuse it with strawberries if you like strawberry vodka let that sit for a while put it in a mason jar strain it out and then you have your own now, strawberry what is vodka. a mason jar you, you keep saying mason what is a mason jar Mason jars, those glass jars with the with the metal handles that where the tops come off, and you can kind of pull off the lid and pull off the top. Grab, grab me, grab yeah. me a mason jar. I'm gonna show yeah, you. I'm, a mason I'm jar. slow. Yeah. <laughs> this is a mason like jar. And this is actually strawberry uh, vodka, also. So this sits okay. on my little my, my little bar that I have right there. But this is a mason jar. Okay. It comes off. Let me see if I can take it off. It's pretty tight. Okay, it has I've to seen be tight. Those before. Yeah. So the lid comes off. Mm -hmm. and okay. This part that comes uh, off too. Okay. So that's liquor in yeah. there right now? Yes, it is strawberry vodka. <laughs> and it's been I guess business already. is booming in New, in New Orleans. <laughs> so that's good. Yeah, and, you, uh, and you know, New Orleans is a party city. So th this is time. what they do here. They love daiquiris <laughs> down here. I haven't created a daiquiri yet, but. I'm working on a daiquiri this year too, but they love daiquiris down here. So that's their well, like, thing. Yeah. You, you, you go to the French Quarter where they be getting toasted at? <laughs> I don't because in all honesty, I'm not a drinker. I mean, I do drink and I used to drink back in the day, my younger days. Uh, but <laughs> but I am not that big of a drinker now. So I'll sip. I'm a social drinker. So I'll sip. Okay. Um, but no, they they love this. Oh, I smell it. I, I, now nah, I get it. I've seen them jars before, so I can see the shipping in that. And, and now, what's the sixty-five dollar one? That's a gallon. Those are the gallons, and it depends on what type of alcohol you want. You know, we have well liquor and we have premium liquor. So the premium liquor is the more expensive liquor, like maybe Grey Goose or Ciroc or something like that. And then a is premium Hennessy, liquor is Hennessy uh, expensive liquor. It's a premium. It is yes. okay. Okay. All it right, is good. a premium. <laughs> but I, I've also found a substitute for, for Hennessy too. There's always substitutes for things. So if you don't want Hennessy, you can get a substitute. You got knockoffs? Yeah, they got knockoffs for everything. So you got like wild Irish rose for a knockoff of Hennessy? 
No, not wild uh, Irish rose. Actually, <laughs> what's the name of that alcohol? Because I just bought it last. I just bought it this week. I want to go in my bag and and get it for you, but I don't want to leave. I don't want to leave. But I just you. You don't do ain't no beer or none of that stuff, right? So you ain't doing like uh, forty ounces and all that stuff. No beer, no beer. Now I <laughs> I was thinking about creating a concoction with beer and with wine also, because you can create concoctions like beer. those too. You don't. I yeah, bet I, you. Yeah, I, I'll I, bet you. I can make you something with beer in it, and you will like it. <laughs> when I, I hear beer, you. I think about belly, beer and belly. So I don't. Yeah, I don't. <laughs> I get it. I get it. That's just me. <laughs> so, all right. So how how does it work? Someone who heard seen this video here, they want to support you. Um, they uh, they got family in New Orleans. They can easily engage you. Would you deliver it, or they had to come to you? I deliver it, or you can come to me. It depends on what area you in. I do have a stop area where I don't go as far as a certain you know perimeter, but um, I do deliver. I'm on the West Bank of New Orleans, I guess you wouldn't call this New Orleans, but I'm on the West Bank of Louisiana, which is 15 minutes away from New Orleans. Um, and I deliver all the way to about Claiborne or on the east. I may go a little further depending on the price of the package. If you purchase a $200 order from me, I'm going to you. So it just it just, it just, just depends. I'm negotiable also. Um, now, 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 what is that long bridge, super long bridge to get to New Orleans? What is that? The Mississippi Bridge. Oh, oh, is that the one? Yep, that's across the river. So when you go across the Mississippi Bridge, you're on the West Bank. You go back across, you in the city. How, how many miles is that? That's real long, right? I mean... Oh, uh, you mean the bridge? It, it's, it's you driving over water. It feels like forever. It is. Um, I, I would assume maybe going across the bridge maybe is a mile. Maybe, maybe a mile, maybe two at the most, but it doesn't take long to drive across the river. Well, that's not the way I came. When we drove, we was on that joker for a long time. You might have been on the, the bridge by Pontchartrain coming from Mississippi. That's where you are. I'm not sure. I can't, I don't know if that's Pontchartrain or what area that is, but there's a long bridge that you it go across was, before you even get to the city, but it's coming from Mississippi, right? It, yeah, was it was ungodly long. It was ungodly. Like you'd get sick thinking about what, <laughs> what, what can happen out there. <laughs> so, so. That's the bridge that you were on coming here, but yeah, that's on the yeah. opposite side coming from Mississippi. We're on the other side. Okay. All right. Yeah. So, so what I want to do, because uh, your sister who does, um, she's a massage therapist, right? Shout out to Chili Ab Israel. Yes, my sister. That's right. That's right. <laughs> So uh, I told everyone with this national network we have, we believe in spending money with each other, circulate money. Uh, everyone knows someone. So all the people that got family and friends in New Orleans, when they birthday come up, we want them to patronize you. It's not just about liquor. You said you do health concoctions too, but absolutely, business, but you really, really will help us as a as a people keep the money internal. You know. Yes. And I Excellent. and I really love and I really appreciate what you're doing and you're to be commended to for and you and those of you that are a part of this operation that puts this mm -hmm. together because this is what is needed for our people to be more liberated. This is yes. exactly yes. what is needed. And and we need this, especially here in New Orleans, because we are not the minority here. <laughs> okay, we are the majority, especially in right. this city. Yes, yes. And you did your twelve dollars quickly now, it yes, takes three months you. so you three months ahead <laughs> i'm there i'm there i'm already there that's what i do i try to support as much as i can um and i support as much as i can because i need to support too so reciprocity yes. is is important in everything that we do so yes, you'll indeed. always no that's what i tell people my expect another Don't 12 dollars you might get another 12 dollars you know? next week or in a month you never know <laughs> but, well the, the good news is circulation and like you said, yes. reciprocity. Don't just be an extractor. Only take, take, take. Let it yes. circulate. Don't just take. So how do people reach you? Well, on Facebook, I am Dawn Israel. I-S-R-A-E-L. Um, you can also go on Facebook and follow Divine Cocktails, LLC. Um, Queen of All Trades, if you want to check out Queen of All Trades, LLC also. I'm on Instagram 
at queen of no divine queen of all trades. So it's all one word D I V I N E queen of all trades on Instagram. Check out peace in the streets is uh pits movement dot pits movement dot org on uh on Instagram and divine underscore cocktails underscore LLC for divine cocktails. I also um, wanted to give you information and anybody that's watching information to business for us underscore LLC, which is a business that, which is a woman that promotes black businesses. Now, let me make sure I'm giving you that, that information correctly yeah. because I want to make yeah. sure that everybody has that co correct and, information. And, and while you're looking that up, for everyone who's on the five dollar circulation train, that her cash app is that same thing, Divine Cocktails LLC, right? Cash yes. uh, with the dollar sign. Yes. Okay. So it's business for the the number four us underscore LLC. This is a woman that promotes black owned businesses. You can promote your black owned business for free. With her, there's also certain packages too, but it, you can register your, your business online. So if you have a business and you're looking for promotion, you're looking for networking, go to business for us underscore LLC. There's also a link when you go to Instagram where you can click the link and go directly to the website and you can register your business. Now, nah, as love. Last thing I want to uh, put out there, you've been to Chicago before? I have not, and I cannot wait to go. And you are the reason why I will be going. That's right. <laughs> I will what, what, definitely be going. Now, now you heard of Michael Jackson, right? Oh, absolutely. So you've been to Gary, Indiana before where he was born? I haven't, but I've been to Indiana to go shopping. I think I told you that before I went to school in Simpsonville, Kentucky. I've been to school everywhere. I went to Job Corps in Simpsonville, Kentucky, too. Um and we went shopping in Gary, Indiana. So that's as far as I've been, as far as Indiana. So why you didn't go over to his house, 23rd Jackson Street? Well, you know, I was just shopping. I was a little whippersnapper back then. I was okay. worried about Michael Jackson. I was worried about getting my clothes. <laughs> but they was moonwalking back then. So that was uh, famous still. <laughs> yeah, I think I was about, I think I was about 19. I think I was about 19 when I went to Gary, Indiana. And that was the only time that I ever went just to go shopping. And yeah. they used to take us from Job Corps to go to this little mall and go shopping over there. All right. Yeah. But, but no, nah, that's the beauty with this network is all about travel. I think travel is going to do so much for black people dealing with trauma. It's going to allow us to meet each other, network, share, love, and just right. get out here and have a good time uh, doing business and moving forward. Right. Right. It is. It is. And I can't Thank wait you. to make it out there. Yeah, excellent. Do you have a phone number? You don't put your phone number out there. I have a business number. Um, my business number is 504-513-1282. Um, one more time. 504-513-1282. Emmanuel. Excellent. Excellent. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, you, did I leave anything out? Anything else you um, want to share? Um. No, I think we've covered everything. Like I said, Queen of All Trades, Peace in the Streets. If anybody wants to get involved or if you want to come down here during a Peace in the Streets event, please feel free to contact me. We are always looking for organizations to network with, organizations to put out there on that platform so that New Orleans knows about your organization too. So I'm always willing to network with anybody, any businesses, any individuals. Um, so please contact me for networking also. All right. And Master P know you? Is he supporting you? No, but you know what? I said I was going to make a concoction out of one of his. Because you know he has alcohol, too. He has a rum. I said I was going to make a concoction out of his alcohol and then send it to him. So maybe, right. right. maybe <laughs> I'll put that in the universe for this year. And I'll get go. to meet him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate you. And uh, looking forward to just working together. We go rock and roll. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Ken. You are appreciated for what you are doing. Yes, indeed. Peace. <laughs> Peace. All right. Bye-bye.